We live in a world full of unknowns about the future, but what if we were given insight into events that might happen soon? If you're curious, we've gathered 10 intriguing prophecies from prophets around the globe, predictions that could potentially shape the coming years. One such prophecy involves the future of the papacy, suggesting that after Pope Benedict, there may only be one more pope. In 1139, St. Malachy, an Irish bishop, embarked on a demanding pilgrimage to Rome. Upon arriving in the Eternal City, he collapsed to the ground and began uttering Latin phrases that supposedly foretold the future of the papacy. His words remained hidden by the Roman Catholic Church for over three centuries, but even today, 90% of his predictions are said to have come true. His prophecies unfold in the form of brief Latin mottos, each describing a specific pope, and culminate in the ominous final reign of the last pontiff, which signals the approach of Judgment Day. St. Malachy's prophecy is a collection of brief descriptions linked to more than a hundred popes, beginning with Celestine Roman II, who served in 1143-44. Based on the progression of the list, the second-to-last motto corresponds to the now-retired Pope Benedict Roman XVI. The 112th cryptic Latin phrase in Malachy's sequence foretells the papacies up to the present Pope Francis. Malachy's prediction for the 112th Pope is chilling. After the reign of this final pope, the end of the world will follow. According to St. Malachy's complete prophecy, during the final persecution of the Roman Church, Peter the Roman will lead the faithful through great tribulations, after which Rome, the city of seven hills, will be destroyed and a divine judge will bring about the end. Despite Pope Francis being an Argentinian who chose his papal name in honor of St. Francis of Assisi, some doomsday believers interpret the prophecy differently. They argue that Pope Francis, whose birth name is Jorge Mario Bergoglio, has ties to Peter through his Italian heritage, thus linking him to the final pope mentioned in St. Malachy's vision. According to St. Malachy's list, Pope Benedict was the 111th pontiff, meaning Pope Francis is the 112th. Malachy said that during this last papacy, God would judge the Pope and the city of Rome, which the Bible also predicts will be destroyed. Revelation 17 speaks of the fall of Babylon, a city said to sit on seven hills, which many interpret as a reference to Rome. This destruction is prophesied to occur at the end of the Great Tribulation, coinciding with the Battle of Armageddon. The Bible further suggests that the Pope in office at the time of the Antichrist will form an alliance with him, becoming the foretold false prophet. Interestingly, numerous Catholic prophecies also predict the rise of an evil pope, often thought to be the last pope. As for Pope Benedict, the prophecy describes him as Gloria Olivi, which means the glory of the olive. Some claim that this prophecy is accurate, pointing out that the Benedictine order is associated with the olive branch. The final pope, according to St. Malachy, should be Peter the Roman. Many of the mottos in the prophecy are remarkably accurate. For example, Pope Urban Roman VIII is associated with Lilium et Rosa, meaning the lily and the rose, and he hailed from Florence, whose emblem is the fleur de lis. Pope John Paul Roman II is linked with de labor solis, meaning from the labor of the sun, a fitting reference since he was born during a solar eclipse on May 18, 1920. Another example is Pope Pius Roman VI, referred to as Peregrinus Apostolicus, or the Pilgrim Pope, because of his extensive travels. So, is Pope Francis truly the last pope? Will he be the false prophet or the evil pope that some Catholic prophecies mention? Did you know that Vatican means Hill of Fortune Tellers and Soothsayers? It's fascinating to consider. According to the Irish seer of the 12th century, this final pope will mark the end times. Only time will tell if these predictions hold true. The prophet who earned the moniker, the Sleeping Prophet, is also worth noting for his unusual method of falling into a sleep-like state, from which he would wake with detailed visions and knowledge. Edgar Case, widely known for his ability to diagnose illnesses and suggest treatments, while in a deep, trance-like state, also predicted several fascinating possibilities for the future, including the year 2024. While skeptics often question the validity of his visions, his followers point to the accuracy of many past predictions. 
The future is notoriously difficult to foresee, but Case's insights about 2024 provide a lot to think about when considering what might lie ahead in just a few short years. According to Case, 2024 is poised to be a critical point in human history. He foresaw this year as a turning point, a period in which humanity collectively wakes up to a higher level of consciousness. Case believed that by 2024, many people would experience a profound spiritual awakening, becoming more attuned to their inner selves and gaining a deeper appreciation for the interconnectedness of all living things. This idea aligns with the growing popularity of mindfulness, meditation, and holistic wellness practices that are becoming more prominent in today's world. In a time when scientific and technological progress seems to dominate our collective focus, many people have reported feeling increasingly disconnected from a sense of purpose and meaning in their lives. Case predicted this shift in consciousness long ago, believing that 2024 would be an ideal time for humanity to embark on a journey of self-discovery. He urged people to seek a reconnection with their inner selves and strive for a more fulfilling life. Case also spoke about the spiritual awakening that happens after death. He suggested that after we leave this life, some souls may find themselves in a realm devoid of light, love, and life, a place that mirrors their inner state. For certain souls, this dark and empty space might represent exactly what they desired, isolation. However, for others, this profound loneliness is unbearably painful. In the absence of truth, love, and kindness, some souls experience intense fear and suffering in this void. The darkness in this realm is so overwhelming that it causes actual pain, leaving those within it gripped by an unexplainable terror. The darkness in this realm is not uniform, there are different levels. The closer a soul is to the center, the more isolated and painful the experience becomes. On the outer edges, there is more interaction with other souls, but as one moves toward the core, the solitude deepens. Souls in this outer darkness cannot escape it by traveling through different dimensions. Instead, they must evolve and grow through the layers of the realm. According to Case, the level of darkness in which a soul finds itself is directly related to the amount of love or lack thereof that they embodied during their life. However, Case emphasized that this realm of outer darkness is not a form of punishment. It operates under a lawful, natural order that exists for the benefit of those who find themselves there. This space wasn't created intentionally for any soul to suffer, but rather as a consequence of the selfishness and negativity that some beings have contributed throughout creation. The desire for self-interest has been so overwhelming across time and space that this realm manifested from the collective actions of those souls. The realm of outer darkness, according to Case, continues to exist due to the ongoing self-centeredness of certain souls, but it serves as a necessary environment for growth and transformation. Spiritual awakening, as Case described, is a transformative shift in one's understanding of life and the world. Often it follows a period of feeling lost, unfulfilled, or disconnected. Interestingly, some people report experiencing physical symptoms, such as fevers, during their awakening symbolizing the burning away of old beliefs and patterns. This awakening can occur either suddenly or gradually, and it usually brings with it a change in how one perceives the world, an increase in self-awareness, and a stronger connection to a higher power. Even during times of internal turmoil, a spiritual awakening can manifest in various forms and be experienced uniquely by different individuals. Some of the more common signs of spiritual awakening include a heightened sense of empathy, a stronger capacity for compassion and love, a greater ability to stay present in the moment, and a deeper connection to both nature and the universe. Many also notice an increased awareness of synchronicities and signs, as well as an overall sense of peace and fulfillment. Ultimately, a spiritual awakening marks the moment when someone reaches a new level of understanding about themselves and the world around them. It's through this transformative process that a person realizes their true potential and gains the ability to make profound changes in their life, often referred to as spiritual ascension. It's important to differentiate between spiritual awakening and ascension, though the terms are often used interchangeably. Spiritual awakening is the internal shift in consciousness that leads a person to experience a fundamental change in their perception of themselves and the world. 
Ascension, particularly the concept of 5D ascension, represents a transition beyond the limitations of physical reality into a realm of greater spiritual awareness and enlightenment. This spiritual ascension is thought to involve an elevation from the three-dimensional reality. We live into a five-dimensional state of being, where higher levels of understanding and spiritual enlightenment are reached. As a person undergoes this spiritual ascension, they often experience a newfound sense of direction and purpose in life. Their spiritual practices deepen, and their beliefs become more firmly rooted. This shift is frequently accompanied by a profound sense of connection to a higher power, along with clarity in their life's purpose. In connection to broader prophecies, we see that throughout history, God has given humanity warnings, signs, and predictions about what would occur on earth before his return. Many people believe that the events unfolding across the world today are evidence that these ancient prophecies are coming true. Much like the sound of cicadas signals the coming of summer, the signs we witness now could be heralding the arrival of a new era. When you see these events happening, be alert, for the day of the Lord may be near. In the first half of 2024 alone, thousands of earthquakes, both large and small, have been recorded across the globe. Some believe that this wave of seismic activity corresponds to biblical prophecies about the end times, particularly those passed down by Jesus in the Gospels. According to Scripture, the kingdom of heaven will arrive at a time when the world experiences large-scale earthquakes, famines, and plagues, accompanied by fearsome events and heavenly signs. Jesus also spoke of celestial signs involving the sun, moon, and stars, reinforcing the idea that these natural disasters are precursors to what is foretold. A fitting biblical passage can be found in Matthew 24, 7, 8, where it says, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. This paints a picture of turbulent times as a precursor to greater events. Some interpret the string of natural disasters as warnings from a higher power, signaling that worse events may still come. The book of Revelation contains multiple references to earthquakes, emphasizing their significance. For example, in Revelation chapter 8, an angel fills a censer with fire from the altar, casting it to the earth, causing voices, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Later in chapter 16, it mentions an earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. These biblical accounts suggest that earthquakes are more than just natural phenomena, they are signs of what is to come. The Bible's prophecy about earthquakes serves as a reminder of the larger events that may soon unfold. Jesus taught that when we witness certain signs, it indicates that God's kingdom is approaching. The Bible describes God's kingdom as a real government in heaven, with Jesus Christ reigning as its king. This is the very kingdom Jesus instructed his followers to pray for. When God's kingdom ultimately governs the earth, he will prevent natural disasters, including earthquakes, from causing harm to humanity. Additionally, he will heal both the physical and emotional wounds caused by the suffering we endure today. In some ways, these natural disasters may serve as reminders of the finite nature of our world and universe. They urge us to remain spiritually prepared for the new heaven and earth that is promised, where all disasters will be eliminated, and those faithful to God will live in perfect harmony with Him. One sign that we are approaching the end times, as the Bible warns, is the increasing number of people who mock and ridicule God. This is a painful reality today, as more and more individuals, both directly and indirectly, express their disdain for God and His teachings. These mockers have become so numerous that they are nearly impossible to count. More troubling are the public figures who use their influence to subtly encourage others to turn away from faith. This widespread mockery is a clear sign of the approaching end, as the Bible explicitly foretold. In the last days, it says, scoffers will follow their own selfish desires, ignoring the truth of God's word. Some interpret movies and media as reflecting this trend of disrespect. For instance, one film presents a main character who, as a non-believer, attempts to exploit Jesus for personal gain, only to meet his demise. Rather than focusing on the lessons learned throughout the film, some people see this as blasphemous. 
However, others might point out that the character ultimately recognizes the truth of Christ before facing death. This controversy reflects a broader debate about the portrayal of faith in modern media. How do you feel about such depictions? Do they disrespect God, or do they serve a deeper purpose? The Bible also cautions that mockers will dismiss the idea of divine judgment, claiming that everything continues as it always has since the dawn of creation. Yet, God reminds us through Scripture that this is a misunderstanding. In Noah's time, the world was judged and destroyed by a global flood. The belief that nothing has changed is simply untrue. God has already intervened once, and He has appointed a future time when the earth will be judged by fire. Jesus Christ holds a name above all others. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Even though many refuse to bow to Him now, the Bible assures us that, on Judgment Day, all will bow before Jesus, including those who mock and scoff at Him. For those who have strayed by mocking God, there is still time to turn to Christ and live. The Bible tells us that from the very start of life, we are prone to turn away from God. This explains why even young children, without being taught, will naturally disobey. Sin is a part of our human nature, but there is hope in repentance and faith in Christ. Let us all remember that despite our sins, God's mercy is available to those who seek it. Even the mockers, those who scoff at His name, will one day acknowledge the truth and power of Jesus Christ. So, let's turn to Him, seek forgiveness, and live in His grace. When you tell a baby or toddler not to do something, more often than not, they will smile at you and then proceed to do exactly what you ask them not to. This is a reflection of our inherent nature. From the moment Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, every human has been born with a sinful nature. That's why we are in need of a Savior. Without divine intervention, we follow our own corrupt desires, pursuing selfish goals. Without Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all that awaits is death both physical and what the Bible calls the second death, which is eternal punishment. We don't want you to die in your sins and face that fate. Jesus warned of false prophets in the last days. He encouraged us to seek the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy, but warned that many would hate the light and embrace darkness. Until you accept the truth, you will be ensnared by these false prophets. As Satan sends more of them into the world, they deceive many and lead people astray. What you may not realize is that these fake prophets are tools Satan is using to attack the church with deception as their weapon. The number of false prophets continues to grow. Tragically, some who were once genuine prophets have turned to deception in their pursuit of wealth. These false prophets are causing great harm to the church and to the salvation of believers. Imagine the damage done to those who have lost their faith because of the deception they endured at the hands of these false teachers. They create chaos, leading many away from the faith and causing betrayal and hatred among people. In these troubling times, Satan equips these false prophets with the ability to perform fake miracles and see false visions, deceiving many. They plant fear rather than faith, making their prophecies filled with terror. Worse, they discourage people from accepting Christ, leading many away from the truth. Their corrupt lifestyles disillusion those who have already accepted Jesus and prevent others from coming to faith. So how can we break free from the web of false prophets? The Bible speaks of a key figure in the end times, known as the false prophet, who is described in Revelation 13. He is called the second beast, while the Antichrist is the first. This false prophet will work alongside the Antichrist and Satan, deceiving many during the tribulation. His rise from the earth is symbolic, and he will speak with deception, like Satan himself. He will possess the authority of the Antichrist and lead people into worshipping him. This false prophet will perform miraculous signs, such as bringing fire down from the sky, and will have an image of the Antichrist created. He will make this image appear alive and will kill those who refuse to worship it. Additionally, he will be responsible for forcing people to take the mark of the beast. One of his roles will be to gather people for the final battle of Armageddon. Revelation 16 describes unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. These demonic spirits will perform signs to deceive kings and gather them for battle on the great day of God Almighty. 
The ultimate fate of the false prophet is judgment. Revelation 19.20 states that the beast and the false prophet, who deceived those who received the mark of the beast, will be captured and thrown alive into the lake of fire, burning with sulfur. At the end of the millennial kingdom, Satan will be released briefly for one final battle. However, Revelation 20 shows us that the false prophet's fate is sealed. The devil, who deceived the nations, will also be thrown into the lake of fire, where the beast and the false prophet will be tormented forever. Though the false prophet may have had power for a time, his eternal punishment will be inescapable. While false prophets may seem powerful for now, their deception will not last forever. God's judgment is certain, and those who deceive others will face eternal consequences. Let us be vigilant, recognizing the difference between truth and deception, and placing our faith in Christ, who alone can lead us to eternal life. We don't need to fear the false prophet of the end times right now, but many false prophets exist today. These individuals teach ideas that go against the clear teachings of Scripture, and we must reject them, knowing they will face a similar judgment in the end. As the Apostle Paul warns in his letter to Timothy, for the time is coming when people will not put up with sound teaching. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers who will say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn away from the truth and turn to myths. Paul urges believers to stay clear-headed, endure hardship, do the work of spreading the gospel, and stay faithful to their ministry. Recently, there has been increased speculation about predictions from 16th century astrologer Nostradamus, who may have foreseen a rocky future for Britain's King Charles Roman III in 2024. Following the king's diagnosis of cancer, which was discovered during treatment for an enlarged prostate, royal commentators have begun wondering if Charles might choose to step down from the throne, either voluntarily or because of pressure related to his health. Buckingham Palace has not revealed much about the specific type or stage of Charles's cancer, which has only led to more concern and uncertainty about the king's health and what this could mean for the future of the British monarchy. In his famous book of prophecies, Les Prophetes, Nostradamus appears to have predicted the potential abdication of a monarch, which some now see as possibly referring to King Charles. Nostradamus's writings suggest that a king might step down and be replaced by someone who was not expected to take the throne. This prediction echoes the current speculation surrounding King Charles and his son, Prince Harry. Nostradamus once foretold that the King of the Isles would be forced out and replaced by someone with no mark of a king. Previously, Nostradamus also correctly predicted the death of Queen Elizabeth Roman II around the age of 96, which came true when the Queen passed away in 2022 and King Charles assumed the throne. However, it remains unclear how Prince Harry, who has distanced himself from royal responsibilities, could rise to become king, as suggested in the prophecy. The royal family has been embroiled in scandals in recent years, but Prince Harry's departure from royal duties made the biggest headlines globally. Despite stepping away from his royal obligations, many people still wonder whether Prince Harry could eventually ascend to the throne, given his status as a royal by birth. Currently, Prince Harry is fifth in line for the British throne. In the event of King Charles's death, the first in line would be Prince William, Charles's eldest son. Even if something were to happen to William, Prince Harry wouldn't be next in line, as William's firstborn, Prince George, would inherit the crown followed by Princess Charlotte and then Prince Louis. Only in the unlikely event that William abdicates while George is still underage would the question of Harry becoming regent arise. As a regent, Harry would temporarily govern the kingdom until George came of age and could take on his role as king. The British monarchy has always been bound by strict rules of succession, and though unlikely, circumstances could arise that would alter the expected line of rulers. Still, Nostradamus's prophecies leave room for interpretation, and whether Prince Harry will ever rule remains an open question. The idea of Nostradamus predicting that Prince Harry would become king seems far-fetched, but as with all prophecies, we can only truly know after events have unfolded. As for the possibility of a female president in the United States, the question remains, is the country ready to elect a woman to its highest office?
while there is no doubt about the competence of female leaders, as women have excelled in politics time and time again, the political landscape in the U.S. has been dominated by men. Very few women have navigated the complex paths that lead to the White House. But does the Simpsons care about all the political intricacies? Not particularly. In an episode titled, Bart to the Future, Lisa Simpson is portrayed as the first female president of the United States. In this storyline, the country had been left in financial ruin due to the poor decisions of a fictional President Trump, and Lisa's solution was to implement a tax increase to stabilize the economy. With the 2024 elections on the horizon, some wonder if the animated series might strike again with another accurate prediction. Many have already pointed to Kamala Harris, the first female and black vice president, as a sign that the Simpsons may have been on to something. Could Harris go a step further and become the first female president in 2024? The idea of a woman in the Oval Office is now more conceivable than ever. Harris's potential candidacy opens the door to discussions about the future of female leadership in the U.S. This leads to another intriguing prediction involving the Trump family. In an episode that aired in October 2016, The Simpsons hinted at Ivanka Trump, the daughter of former President Donald Trump, running for office. Homer Simpson can be seen wearing a campaign button that reads, Ivanka 2028. Could this be another one of the show's eerily accurate predictions? Ivanka has become a notable figure in the U.S. political sphere, but the possibility of her running for president remains speculative. However, this wasn't Ivanka's first appearance on the show, at least her character wasn't new to the Simpsons universe. In a 2017 episode, her character replaced the late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, all while sporting a judicial robe and earrings from her own fashion line. The thought of Ivanka Trump running for president might come as a surprise to many, but could the Trump family be laying the groundwork for a lasting political dynasty? Shifting gears to an even more unusual topic, The Simpsons may have also touched upon a complex scientific theory in a rather unexpected way. The long-running series is known for its celebrity guest appearances and uncanny ability to seemingly predict future events. However, it's not typically associated with advanced cosmological ideas. Nevertheless, some cosmologists believe Homer Simpson might have stumbled upon a legitimate scientific concept. The show's underachieving patriarch Homer is well known for his love of junk food, particularly donuts. In one episode, Homer's gluttony lands him in hell, where he's sentenced to be force-fed donuts by a demon. To the demon's dismay, Homer doesn't seem to mind, happily devouring the endless supply of donuts for eternity. While Homer's donut obsession is played for laughs, some cosmologists have drawn parallels between Homer's love of the sugary treat and the donut-shaped universe theory, a concept that suggests the universe could be shaped like a torus or a donut. Although it's unlikely the writers intended such a deep connection, the idea has gained attention in the scientific community, proving that The Simpsons has a way of intersecting with real-world ideas in unexpected ways. Homer Simpson's obsession with donuts is legendary. He sold his soul for a final bite, fantasized about injecting donuts into his veins, and even rejected a rich, happy life in an alternate reality because he believed it lacked donuts. Among his many donut-filled adventures, perhaps the most surreal is his conversation with none other than the world-renowned theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking, the brilliant mind known for his contributions to theoretical physics, passed away in 2018, but not before he made a memorable appearance on The Simpsons. Beyond his genius, Hawking was also known for his unexpected wit and humor, which he showcased in season 10 of the show. In this episode, Hawking arrives in Springfield to restore order after the town descends into chaos. After resolving the situation, Hawking and Homer share a beer at Moe's Tavern. During their conversation, Hawking tells Homer he finds his theory of a donut-shaped universe intriguing and jokes that he might steal the idea. Could Homer's whimsical idea actually have some scientific merit? According to Nature Journal, cosmologists have proposed various possible shapes for the universe, including a wraparound shape, much like a football or even a donut. 
In such a universe, space would appear infinite because no matter how far you travel, you'd eventually end up back where you started, similar to circumnavigating the globe. However, some experts dismiss this idea, suggesting that a donut-shaped universe would leave specific patterns in the sky that haven't been observed. Nonetheless, the idea remains a possibility in the minds of some cosmologists, leaving open the humorous yet intriguing thought that Homer might not have been entirely wrong. Moving on to another Simpsons prediction. In 2016, an episode titled Friends and Family seemingly anticipated a future technology that would closely resemble Apple's Vision Pro headset, released in February 2024. Since the launch of Apple Vision Pro, users have shared videos online, showing themselves testing the 3D $500 headset. This all mirrors the 2016 episode in which the residents of Springfield experiment with a virtual reality headset developed by Mr. Burns. In the episode, characters like Homer and Marge use the headset to interact virtually, while other citizens have humorous mishaps, such as Principal Skinner enjoying a virtual picnic and bartender Mo walking into a lamppost. The similarities between the episode and reality have not gone unnoticed. One particularly eerie parallel involves a real-life video of a man wearing the Vision Pro headset, crossing the street while seemingly interacting with virtual objects in mid-air. The Vision Pro allows users to immerse themselves in Apple's Vision OS, utilizing spatial technology for FaceTime, photos, and apps, all controlled through eye movements, hand gestures, and voice commands. Fans of The Simpsons couldn't help but call this prediction one of the show's most striking examples of life imitating art, sparking theories that the show's writers may possess some kind of time travel technology. Finally, another bizarre prediction linked to The Simpsons involves the prospect of a zombie apocalypse, a chilling prophecy credited to the animated family with yellow skin. While it's meant to be humorous and exaggerated, The Simpsons have proven, time and time again, that their light-hearted plots sometimes hit eerily close to reality. Whether it's virtual reality headsets, donut-shaped universes, or even the oddest of global catastrophes, this animated series has a knack for making its outlandish storylines seem strangely prophetic. In one episode of The Simpsons, news anchor Kent Brockman transforms into an enraged zombie after eating fast food from Krusty the Clown. Within just 28 days, zombies have taken over Springfield, driven by their insatiable hunger. For those unfamiliar with the concept, zombies are fictional creatures reanimated human corpses that have lost their souls. These undead beings usually have only one goal, to terrify or, in many stories, to feast on human flesh. The concept of zombies has deep roots in Haitian folklore. In old Haitian tales, zombies were said to be dead bodies reanimated through magical means. As time passed, modern zombie stories introduced a variety of other causes for reanimation, such as nuclear radiation, viruses, or scientific experiments gone horribly wrong. Zombies, in one way or another, have been part of pop culture for a long time, showing up in stories like White Zombie, The Walking Dead, and Train to Busan. Early depictions of zombies often referenced Haitian voodoo practices, but today, zombies have taken on many different forms across movies, books, and TV shows. Shifting to a much less terrifying invention, imagine being able to understand exactly what your baby needs when they cry. That's where the concept of a baby translator comes in a device that could decode the mysterious sounds of infants. This idea might seem far-fetched, but the Simpsons seem to have predicted it long before the technology became a reality. In Season 3, Episode 24, titled, Brother, Can You Spare Two Dimes? Herb Powell, Homer's half-brother, invents a gadget that translates baby talk into understandable language. The idea of such a device is certainly fascinating, but is it possible to recreate this in the real world, or is it just a fun fantasy? For those doubting the potential for such technology, you might be surprised to learn that a company has actually made significant progress toward making a baby translator a reality. A Swiss software company called Zoundream has developed a machine that uses artificial intelligence to interpret the cries of babies. The device can reportedly determine whether a baby is hungry, needs comfort, or just wants some peace from the overstimulation around them. With this innovative technology, 
parents may soon be able to understand their baby's needs with precision potentially as soon as 2024. This invention could revolutionize the way parents and caregivers respond to their infants, turning what was once a guessing game into a more informed approach to child care. It seems that the Simpsons might have been ahead of their time once again, predicting a future where understanding babies' cries becomes as simple as using a clever gadget.